uh, presidential debate. I'm Sophia from Miss Breeding Class and will serve as moderator. Today's debate will be structured in a town hall format with questions posed by you, the students. Now please join me in welcoming the candidates for your president, Eddie Grandwood and Caitlin Parker. in three words, what would those three words be? Before we get started, I'd like to thank the Crazy Town Elementary Election Commission, the entire student body, and my opponent for what I'm confident will be an illuminating, constructive conversation. And to answer your question, if I could describe my candidacy in three words, they would be for too long, our student body has been divided into factions of the haves and the have-nots, but under my leadership, every student will get a chance at equal opportunity. Thank you. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the Crazy Town Elementary Election Commission, the entire student body, and my opponent for what I am confident will be an illuminating and constructive conversation. I'd also like to thank the Tooth Fairy, whom my opponent did not thank, presumably because she isn't a true believer. <laughs> Finally, I will adhere to Brian's three-word limit and describe my candidacy as follows. My goals include... The second question comes from Don Francisco, who this one time saw a PG-13 movie while her parents weren't home. I love tater tots. What is your stance on tater tots? To reiterate, I love tater tots. An excellent question, Dawn. So, over the past decade, our school lunches have seen a disturbing decline in overall quantity of tot. That's why, when I'm elected, I plan to reinstate the legislation known as a lot of tots, which requires by law that all lunch trays adhere to my PP, PPP, P plan. Ladies and gentlemen, these are troubling times, but make no mistake, I will end the war on taterism. <laughs> Folks, I'm not going to beat around the potato bush. Tots poll at 99.4%, that's higher than ice cream trucks. In other words, if you hate tots, you hate America. And I don't hate America, unless it's opposite day. <laughs> it's opposite day? It's not opposite day. Then I love America. <laughs> Listen, my point is, the more tots, the better, of course, but do we really feel that we need more cafeteria bureaucracy? Under my administration, you'll say goodbye to big government lunches and, hey, what's up to putting the power in your hands? Under my lunchbox lovers program, you'll say goodbye to the days of cardboard grade pizza, half-thawed green beans, and <laughs> I hate to use the M word, but milk. Oh. Instead, we the people have the power to choose what's for lunch, be it tater tots, corn dog, lunchables, and this is most important, fruit by the foot. <laughs> the next question comes from Brendan Slattery, whose career goals include Batman. <laughs> Girls are gross. <laughs> um, thank you. <laughs> Gender issues are a huge part of this debate, and as a fellow boy, I'd like to thank you not only for bringing them up, but for not being a stupid girl. <laughs> Girls will always be gross, despite what my older brother Jim says, which is why on day one of my administration, I will reverse the short-sighted short verdict by the student council on awesome girls versus silly boys. <gasps> awesome girls versus silly boys is our generation's most influential ruling, which is why I will throw my full support behind it and ensure the CDC eradicate every strain of cootie and call for punitive damages pursuant to the making of paint tips. Uh, that's outrageous. 
Pigtail yanking rights have been in place since the days of our forefathers. You take that away, what's next? Our water balloons? You'll take my water balloons away when you pry them from my cold, wet hands. We'll need to move on to the next question. Before we do, Sophia, I'd like to point out that my opponent is a girl, and therefore, by the transitive property of gender, totally gross. And I'd like to point out that my opponent is a boy, and in a few years he'll do a total 180 and try to pass me with cheap cologne while I reject him for someone with a driver's license and stubble. I'm sorry, but we need to move on. The next question comes from Alicia Buck, who drew this picture all by herself. <laughs> what is your stance on the growing opinion that Timmy should take a shower? Thank you for your question, Alicia. I believe this is a generally bipartisan issue, and that I speak for both me and my opponent when I say that Timmy should very much definitely take a shower. Yeah, we don't always agree on everything, but I think we could uh, reach across the aisle here, because simply put, Timmy smells terrible. <laughs> and for our next question, we turn to our Twitter feed. At ChunkyMonkey12 asks, Yo trolls, totes lols, raffle, DM me with pics, hashtag YOLO. <coughs> well, that was a waste of time. Our next question comes from Amelia Winston, who recently got mustard on his shirt. In recent months, there has been some debate about the, veloc the velocity of the holiday icon known as Santa Claus. Where do you stand? Thank you for that question, Emilio. First things first, let's get uh, something straight here. Santa? Real. Irrefutably real. He forms the very bedrock on which our belief system and candy-paste economy is on. Nevertheless, it's time to crack down on all things Kringle. His jolly demeanor notwithstanding, Mr. Claus outsources of hundreds of good American jobs to his North Pole sweatshops, which totally violate our entire compendium of elven labor laws. His reindeer-powered aerial transport is both unsanctioned and blatantly PETA non-compliant. And given the growing epidemic of obesity in this country, should we just ignore his impudent disregard for the food pyramid? With milk and cookies alone, he exceeds the daily recommended value of saturated fat by, uh, guess how much, okay? Guess, guess, yep, that's right, 5,000%. So in summary, Santa Claus, real, yes, but not immune to regulatory scrutiny. Mr. Claus is not, and has never been, too big to fail. A vote for Caitlin is a vote against free toys. <laughs> the next question comes from Patricia Hartley, whose favorite candy is all candy. We live in a difficult time with difficult challenges. With that in mind, I'm curious to know how many jumbo marshmallows you fit in your mouth. <laughs> I have invented a computer algorithm, aka science, that will randomly select every student, giving them a chance to be picked first. Everyone. Yeah, where I come from, that line of thinking is known as hogwash, or malarkey, <laughs> or stupid, stupid, dumb, dumb pants. Yes, maybe that system worked if we were in Russia. 
playing communism ball. <laughs> but we're in America playing kickball. And in America, do we pick LeBron James last in the NBA draft? No, because LeBron James is the best at basketball. That would just be stupid, stupid, dumb, dumb pants. We pick LeBron James first in the NBA draft, just like we pick Jenny Friedman first for kickball every single time, because Jenny Friedman is the best at kicking the ball. Um, the next question comes from Sophie Stevenson, whose Halloween costume was a robot, and it totally looked real. How would you describe your school spirit? The reason I ask is because I've got spirit. Yes, I do. I've got spirit. How about you? Great question. Nobody has crazy town elementary spirit like I do. Which is why, as you can see here on my lapel, I display our mascot, the Northern Elephant Seal, with pride. <laughs> as I look around the audience, I see so much Northern Elephant Seal pride. And oh my god. Oh my, it seems as though my opponent isn't displaying her northern elephant seal pin on her lapel. I guess school spirit isn't for everyone. Isn't it just compelling how my opponent must overcompensate with outward appearance to make up for his inner lack of school spirit? Let me tell you something, spirit isn't just on the outside. It's, on, it's what's on the inside that counts. And what I'm referring to by the inside, of course, is my elephant seal handkerchief, which I keep with me at all times and which is um, noticeably larger than my opponent's lapel pin. Everyone knows that school spirit doesn't just come in size, but also in quantity, which is why, as you can see, I have proudly displayed 10 other pins <laughs> inside my jacket pocket. Uh huh. I have so much school spirit, Northern Elephant Seal is my middle name, and I mean that literally, as I have legally changed my name to Caitlin Northern Elephant Seal Parker. Ladies and gentlemen, my ringtone. <laughs> Alas, my opponent just played the call of the Western Elephant Seal. Rookie mistake. The Northern Elephant Seal actually sounds like. <laughs> If my opponent had true Northern Elephant Seal pride, she would have done the call with the traditional sand flipping and head bobbing, like so. <laughs> well, I can appreciate my opponent's valiant effort and an impression. It will pale in comparison to the real thing. Stand, bring on the seal. What? Seriously? Ladies and gentlemen, though the live northern elephant seal that I captured from the wild this morning is now done, able to join us, <laughs> he will always be with me right here. Which is, if you recall, where I keep this handkerchief, seal pride! Woo! Let it be known that my opponent murdered a seal. Come on! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have now reached the end of today's debate, which means it's time for closing statements. Caitlin, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sophia. My fellow Northern Elephant Seals, when you sit down and you really think, what kind of qualities do I want in a president? Do I want a me-first megalomaniac whose entire Get Out the Vote campaign was based off of um, not only cupcake bribes, but triple chocolate cupcake bribes? And a type of person who drinks from the water fountain in that really weird way where they like stick their whole mouth on it and like, get all slobbery? Or, or, do you want a leader who leads using leadership? <laughs> the future is in your hands, your tiny, underdeveloped hands. Thank you. <laughs> Eddie, your closing statement. I will put a snow cone machine in every single class. <laughs> On behalf of the entire student body, I'd like to thank both candidates for a highly informative conversation. May the best candidate win. That being said, since all past elections were decided by who fit the most marshmallows in their mouth, congratulations to our presumptive <laughs> new president, Eddie Grantwood. Thank you. Thank you.